man and that was one so thank you to emma for providing that special music for us this morning welcome welcome on this pentecost sunday this confirmation sunday where our young folks are going to stand up and affirm their baptisms i am so happy to be worshiping together a couple of things the holy spirit is up to uh, the Holy Spirit is um, helping us mark Memorial Day tomorrow. The office is closed, and there will be no Bible study tomorrow. So I'm going to have to write a sermon all by myself. <laughs> uh, actually, next Sunday, um, we are invited to a service to explain the service. So next Sunday, if you've always wondered, why do we do things in that order? Why do we do, why do things switch up by seasons? Next Sunday, we will have a worship service, and I will explain those things as we go. And then we'll have a picnic. Um, hopefully, the weather will cooperate, and we'll be out in the pavilion for our beginning of the summer picnic. So um, hopefully, you all will join us. The social ministry committee is providing the main meat, and uh, you all are invited to bring sides to share. Or dessert, right? Yeah? Yeah. Dessert's always a good option. Uh, let's see what else. I think that is what the Holy Spirit is up to. And then the next Sunday, the 11th, will be our first outdoor worship service of the summer. Um, we're going to do the second Sunday of every month. In the summer, we'll be worshiping out in the pavilion. So um, join us for that. What else is the Holy Spirit up to? Miss Dawn's got the microphone. She's on her way to Dave. Well, we have some good news about the food pantry. We had a gentleman drive up this week and saw Sandy Humphrey working in the garden and donated $100. We don't know who he is or where he came from and any particular reason, but he donated money for our food pantry. That is a Holy Spirit moment when we have partners in our ministry. That's great. The other announcement is the sign-up sheet is on the bulletin board for cookies for our LOC meal. So you can do that anytime you want to. We do need to have them at the church somewhere that weekend before, so before the 9th, and that way we can get them packaged up for transport. Thank you. Thank you. 
anything else the Holy Spirit is up to in your lives or in our church? Oh, Miss Dawn, you already have the microphone. I have the mic. <laughs> uh, if you're on the prayer chain, you know we've been praying for a young girl whose name is Bella. She's still in the hospital. She got out of ICU. She's still running a fever. But what I really want to tell you is that St. Jacob's reaches very far. Last Sunday, Marsha gave me a lap quilt for Bella, and I had to mail it because Bella's in Columbus, and they got it on Friday, the day she got out of ICU, and she loves it. Mm. So that's it. Yeah, thank we you for the far. ways that our quilting ministry comes along right. the Holy Spirit and offers comfort. Right. I have a picture of her with a quilt if anybody mm -hmm. wants to see it. Wonderful. Lovely. We are um, pray praying for comfort for um, Scott Wisniewski as he is mourning the death of his father. So please include Scott and his family in your prayers this week. Any other something the Holy Spirit is up to? Okay. Then we will prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the ringing of the bell. Before I move to the Thanksgiving for baptism, will you join me in a Memorial Day prayer? Holy God, this weekend we remember all of those who died in service to our country. May we honor the sacrifices they made. May you comfort those who are left behind and all who grieve their losses. And may we know that they rest in your very heart. We pray all this in your son's holy name. Amen. While our young people in particular are remembering their baptisms today, it is a day for all of us to remember. So joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. Our baptism, baptisms unite us with you and your children everywhere. Through these waters, draw us closer to each other and closer to you. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We stand and sing, remember and rejoice. If you'd like to follow in the hymnal, it's number 454. Thank you.
On this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing together every time I feel the Spirit. And just so you know, our dove kite will move amongst you. So if you happen to feel something on your head, it's the kite. Let us sing. Except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts by the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit of the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members and all of the members of the body through many are one body. So it is with Christ, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. Here ends the first reading. Let us read responsibly Psalms 104. How manfold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the city, great and wide with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and lethians which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You gave it to them, they gather it. You opened your hand and they are filled with good things. When you hide their face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. 
O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Here ends the psalm and the reading. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at that sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. 
No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall dream vi- Uh, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens below and above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I invite the children forward for children's time. Good morning. Welcome. It's good to see you all this morning. So this morning we had a story about the Holy Spirit. And I was thinking, the Holy Spirit, um, I'm just wondering, and you all can participate too, you raise your hand if you've ever actually seen the Holy Spirit. Nobody's got their hands up. So when God came to earth, God came as Jesus so we could see him and touch him and know him. And then when Jesus went away, God sent the Holy Spirit and came to us as the Holy Spirit. And we can't see the Spirit. It's like the wind, which is why I'm holding a pinwheel. I know you're all wondering. Because we cannot see the wind. You can't see when I blow, right? But The wind moves things and blows things. So we can see some of the things that the Holy Spirit might be up to. That's why we start our church service like we do every Sunday, is asking, what's the Holy Spirit up to? So we can see the things that the Holy Spirit has caused, even when we can't actually see the Spirit move. So this morning, I think the Holy Spirit was part of giving all of our confirmants, our affirmation of baptism kids, their gifts that they've been sharing with us this morning and the faith to stand up and affirm their baptism. So this service today and all of the ways and people who are sharing their gifts are one of the ways, just one, that the Holy Spirit shows up. I'm sure that the Holy Spirit shows up in your life. So I'm going to give you a pinwheel to take home to remind you to keep an eye out for what the Holy Spirit might be doing even when you can't see the Spirit. I'm going to let you all pick. There's some quite the variety. Here's one. Sorry, parents. They're not quite as noisy as the bells at Easter. So sorry. I know you all are be disappointed. Yeah, you could take that home. Thanks for coming up. Last week, we left our sermon at a cliffhanger. Last week at Ascension, we talked about the fact that Jesus had left the disciples. He took them up to the Mount of Olives. He told them that their assignment was going to be to go and tell about the mighty works of the Lord to Jerusalem, to Judea and Samaria, and to all the earth. And then he told them to go back and stay in Jerusalem until he sent someone. And then he left them waiting. They waited in the upper room, 120 of Jesus' closest friends and family. Praying together, wondering together, waiting to see what God was going to do next. They had their assignment to go and to tell, 
but they weren't ready. They'd been told to wait. And then, ten days later, in the Feast of Pentecost, when Jerusalem was filled up with people for a festival, a harvest festival, a festival when people came from far and wide to celebrate the way that God had spoken God's law through Moses to God's people years and years ago. And so Jerusalem was filling. The people were multiplying. The city was stuffed to the gills. But Jesus' close friends, Jesus' followers, were gathered together in the upper room waiting. And then, and then the Holy Spirit came like the sound of a rushing wind. And little fire appeared on each of their heads and they all started preaching. They started talking about all the amazing things that God had done for them. What comes next? I... Bible study group and I, we were trying to figure out what, you know, because we don't get the details. Sometimes I want more details. But somehow, the people in the street heard. I think that, you know, the streets were close together. The windows were probably open because it's hot. Or sometimes I like to imagine that the Holy Spirit blew those followers out of the upper room and out into the street. But in any case, those people, those followers of God who had gathered from near and far, those people who had been living far, far from the homeland because of the exile that had happened years and years ago, who had settled in those places and learned that language, but only came to Jerusalem for the festival, they suddenly heard the deeds of Jesus, the good news of their Savior in their heart's language. The Holy Spirit made these Galilean disciples who had probably never been much further than the boundaries of their own small town until Jesus came along. Suddenly they were speaking in the language of the world. And the people were amazed, at least most of them. There were a couple who doubted, right? There's some in every crowd. They're just drunk. And then Peter, I love Peter. But I'm pretty sure Peter's never been to a college campus. Because he goes, oh, come on, it's only 9 o'clock. They can't be drunk. Nobody gets drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. More convincingly, Peter goes on to tell the promises of God. Remember back in Joel? Remember when God's prophet Joel promised that in those days, when the time is full, that I will pour my spirit into my people and all of them will prophesy. All of them will tell of the great works of the Lord. And Joel goes on to list all of the people who are least expected to prophesy. The people who you least expect to speak the word straight from the spirit. The old and the young, the slaves, the men and women, all of them, the Holy Spirit will be planted in them, and the Holy Spirit will allow them to speak my good news. I don't know about you, but I see that happening today. This group of young people There is zero doubt in my mind that the Holy Spirit is active and at work in them. 
And if I had any doubts, I would be reminded by their baptism. Because each of us were promised that in our baptism. That God's spirit rests on us. That God's spirit has been poured into us. This gift of our young people who stand up today particularly have the gift of language. <laughs> Chris is laughing. Huh. Not only are they bold to speak, but I don't know if you've noticed, um, maybe you grandparents haven't at all, that teenagers seem to have their own language. They speak the language of the world. To us, it seems strange. To us, sometimes it makes no sense. You know, sometimes I have to ask them, is that good or bad? <laughs> Whatever comment, the compl compliment they just say, is that good or bad? But they speak the language of the world. In their language, in their use of technology, in their inclusion and in their passion, they have welcomed people into our space that might not find welcome elsewhere. They have created a community in and of themselves, and every single one of them will say yes when I ask them to participate in the worship and the proclamation of the gospel in our place. They're gifts. And so, people of St. Jacob, I want to remind us to listen to them. To include them in the meaningful ways of steering our congregation. To listen to their voices, because they are the voice of the Holy Spirit. And the ways that the Holy Spirit is drawing us into declaring God's good news to this time and this place. Now, just an aside to our confirmants, our affirmation of baptism kids, it does also say that our old men will dream dreams. So I want to remind you to continue to listen to the wisdom of the people around you in this congregation who have been walking this walk, who have practiced listening to where the Holy Spirit might be calling The gift of the Spirit is given to all of us. The gift of the Spirit rests in this place today and in all of the places that we go. And we are called to be sharing that good news, to be speaking of God's mighty deeds of power in all of the ways that are unique, in all the languages that we speak, in all of the gifts that God has given us. Amen. We stand and sing together, baptized in water. It's on 456 in your hymnal if you'd like to follow there. Baptized in
united in the hope and joy of the resurrection. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equip the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Guide the young people who affirm their baptisms today to be proclaimers of your good news. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for their land facing destructive fire for forest managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Ever-present, God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and anyone experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Protect our troops and help us to care for our veterans well. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort especially those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Remind us that you hold each of us in your healing hands. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Life-giving God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you, especially Stephen. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism, and for these siblings, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. So now I will call forward Amber, Cameron, Elise, Alex, Emma, and Adele. Travis has spent... Um, his time in formation with us, but isn't able to be with us this morning, so we pray for him as well. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these siblings whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gift of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God. Just, I renounce them is the response. I told you I would feed it to you and I forgot. Let's try. Next. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce...
renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God. Please join us. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? And to strive for justice and peace through all the earth? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these siblings and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. I invite the family of Amber and anyone who has been a part of her time to come forward and lay hands on for this next section. So Sunday school teachers and leaders and family. Stir up in amber the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Cameron. O oh Lord, stir up in Cameron the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Elise. Any, any, just gather around. Let us pray. Stir up in Elise the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Alex. It's a little like musical chairs. <laughs> Gathering close. Oh, God, stir up in Emma the gift. Oh, Alex, oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. 
Take two. That's the problem for following the script instead of looking. Oh God, stir up in Alex the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Okay, now, Emma. <laughs> oh, God, stir up in Emma the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Adele. Oh God, stir up in Adele the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Uh, we are, um, the Sunday School uh, Education Committee has some gifts they would like to present to our students who are affirming their baptism today. Um, this is a very uh, artistic group. If I didn't give them something to color, they would color on themselves. So we've provided them a coloring devotion, um, as well as a Martin Luther comic book you know, just to get a little more information, um, you know, a little more Luther, and some beautiful medallions with their names and their dates on them. So that's a wonderful thing. And our confirmants have given the congregation a gift of a new Pentecost banner. Um, Miss Marcia helped us out by making the, the banner, and the, um, I gave them paint and paintbrushes and let them go. And that's what came of it. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and it'll be a wonderful gift for every time we're celebrating the Spirit. We'll have their gifts of the Holy Spirit among us. So thank you for that. I think Miss Marilyn wants you to get closer to take a good picture. I think that's what she's motioning. Maybe the Holy Spirit needs one of these kids to help you work the phone. <laughs> okay. All right, there's one last piece. Let us rejoice with these siblings in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Now you, my friends, are adult members of the congregation. You can vote in meetings. You can serve on council. Yes. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share that peace with your neighbor.
Before we come to the altar, we take a moment to give thanks for all of the gifts that you have given this week. I'm grateful for all of those who have put your offering in the offering box in the welcome area or mailed checks or used our online giving system in order to support the ways that the Holy Spirit blows us out into the world to share the gospel, the good news. And of course, today I'm specifically giving thanks for our young folks and all the gifts they bring, but also for the ways that your offering throughout the years has provided for their education and their support and their care. So you all have been a part of educating and engaging these young folks that now have so um, such wonderful gifts to share and including them. St. Jacob's does a good job of including our young folks in our worship. So let's give thanks for all of those gifts. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in the feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. We pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome at the table. All of the bread is gluten-free. There will be two lines for bread and two spots for grape juice or wine and empty baskets at the end of the row for your empty cups. Please come. Come and know Christ broken and pour it out for you. And we prepare for communion with a song.
Now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. An announcement I've been forgetting through the whole service is that we have cake. Yay! 
we have cake to celebrate with our Comfermann. So um, it, they've actually already taken a picture with it. So you can move your way out and, and get some cake, and they're going to greet you um, on our way out, out the door. So you'll have a chance to chat with them on the way out and then move into um, a time of celebration. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together, Take My Life That I May Be. You need to stand, but you also need to dance. here because the Compromans understood the assignment. Yeah, they understood. Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.